In this lesson, you'll learn about QuiltWorks Intermediate Configurator features. If you're not familiar with the basic configurator features, we recommend that you watch our basic configurator tutorial lesson first to become more familiar with how to create a QuiltWorks configuration. There are several intermediate features that you can set up for your items in a QuiltWorks configuration. You have the ability to set the quantity for an item, the sort order, the line type, and the item attributes. Let's edit an existing configuration and change some of the characteristics to see how these intermediate features work. Select the Products, Configurator menu option, or click the Configurator icon on the QuiltWorks toolbar. Choose the configuration that you want to change and then click the Edit button. Now click on the Flowchart tab, double click on a selection container, then click on the Items tab and you'll see a list of items that you've set up for this selection container. To change the characteristics of an item, choose the item that you want to adjust and click the Edit button. Let's first start out by changing the quantity and sort order and view how these changes will affect the items in this container. The Quantity option allows you to predetermine the quantity of the item when it's added to your configuration. We'll change the quantity from 1 to 5. Now let's look at the sort order. The sort order gives you the ability to predetermine how the items will be ordered in the selection container. By default, the sort order numbering appears in multiples of 10, but you can enter any whole number into this field. In this example, if you want this item to appear first in the selection container, you'll need to set the sort order to a number less than 10. Change the sort order number to 1 and click OK to save the changes. You can view the changes you made here on the Items tab and also in the configuration. Now let's edit an item and look at the line type settings. In a QuiltWorks configuration you have the ability to choose three different line type properties. You can have an item, a comment, or a subtotal. The product service item property is the most common line item type and is the default when adding an item to your bundle. Now let's look at the comment line item type. Comment lines are particularly useful to add descriptive notes to your quote. You can use comment lines to indicate sections or categories and they can also be used to add separators between line items and the quote. For this example, we'll edit an item in the container to the comment line item type. To change an item to a comment line, select the item that you want to change and click the Edit button. Under the Item Property section, choose Comment and click OK to save your changes. As a helpful tip, we recommend that you create a comment product in your products database, as you see here. You can fill in the description field if you use the same description for your comment, or you can leave the description field blank if you prefer that the sales rep fill in the comment in real time once it's been added to the quote. As another helpful tip, I've created a comment folder in my products database that contains frequently used comments. Let's move on to the last item type under the item properties. For this example, we'll change the last item in the container to the subtotal line item type. When editing the item, choose the subtotal line item type and click OK. The subtotal line item type is a useful feature to have in a configuration because it enables you to subtotal the group of items that you have in the configuration automatically when you add it to your quote. We recommend that you create subtotal items in your products database, such as you did with the comments, as you can see here in the product lookup window. Now let's take a look at how all three line types appear in a quote. For the product service item property, all the information about the line item shows up, including the unit and extended price. The item that we change to a comment only shows the information that's in the description field. And lastly, the item that we change to the subtotal line type shows up as such. Now that we've learned about the different line item types that you can choose in a configuration, let's move on to the item attributes. The supported line item attributes that you can choose are exclude line, hide price, print line, option, and print picture. If the exclude line attribute is set, the line item will not be printed and will not be involved in any calculations. This is useful if you want to exclude a particular item, but you do not want to remove it from the configuration. If the hide price attribute is set, 
The price for this item will not be printed, but will be included in all the calculations. This is useful if you want to include items that are part of a group, but you do not want to display the individual price. If the print line attribute is not selected, the line item will not be printed, but its price will be included in all calculations. This is useful if you want to include service charge line items that are part of the quote, but you do not want to show these individual items. If the option attribute is checked, the item and its price will still show up in the quote, but the price of the item will not be included in the quote total. This feature is useful if you want to show your customer that there are other items that they could benefit from. Pictures can also be associated with the quoted item. If this attribute is set, the picture that you have associated with this item will be included with your quote as long as you choose a layout that supports pictures. Having pictures included with your quote can be very helpful because it allows you to show your customer a visual representation of what they'll be purchasing. For an example on how all these line item attributes behave when you add this configuration to the quote, I've set up a simple configuration to include one of each of these line item attributes. The configuration I've selected has five containers. I'll add one item per container in order to show the exclude line, hide price, print line, optional, and print picture attributes. Each of these products will have a unit price of $100 for this example. Let's add this configuration to the quote and see how the items appear when we preview the quote. The first line item was set up as the exclude line attribute. Therefore, the line item does not show up in the quote, nor is it included in any calculations. The second line item was set up with the hide price attribute. The item's description is visible, but the price for this item does not show up. However, the line item's price is included in the total. The third line item type did not have the print line attribute set so the item does not show up on the quote, but its price is included in the total. The fourth item was set up as the optional item, and although the price is visible, it is not included in the total. The last item has been set up with the print picture attribute, so the item's associated picture displays here. As you've seen in this intermediate configurator tutorial, there are many ways you can customize your items in the configurator to better assist you in creating a complex and detailed configuration.